Okay, 5.3, soil degradation and conservation. A Soferto soils require a lot of time to develop through good old succession. Uh, so this is a nice little uh, chart which shows how uh, we turn from uh, bedrock into soil, starting with the sea horizon as it becomes some unconsolidated material. And then maybe as some lichens and other plants start to develop, they create some organic matter in the O horizon. Eventually this organic matter will decompose um, and combine with rock and other uh, minerals uh, to create the A horizon, our topsoil. Um, and then as the C horizon continues to break down and the A horizon becomes depleted, we can get the, the B horizon sort of in between there. Um, and then human activities can reduce soil fertility and then increase erosion. Um, you can get a high salinity um, by using too much water um, or you can have increased erosion by like, like over planting, um, basically weakening the soil. Uh, so we have soil conservation strategies that can preserve soil fertility and reduce erosion. Uh, so here in this case, more so reducing erosion. Um, with classic terraces. Um, and then the first understanding soil systems change through succession, as we mentioned before. Um, so fertile soil has a total community of organisms. Soil itself is a full ecosystem with biotic and abiotic factors. Um, and then you can see again, the kind of nice stages of succession with our lichens and annual plants that grow and die every year versus perennial herbs that live for multiple years at a time and will flower uh, multiple times, uh, and then eventually we'll get the more uh, long-term trees, and then you end up with climax community, which, you know, nowadays they're like, uh, wh what really is a climax community? A lot of these ecosystems evolved with disturbance, right? Like forest fires will happen, landslides will happen. Um, so, so maybe the real climax community is sort of moving between different stages of succession, kind of a, a newer idea. Uh, so let's talk about what we can do to mess up the soil. We can cut down all the trees. Um, so obviously you can see uh, the trees don't have the roots holding in the soil anymore. The tree canopy actually will protect from rain. Um, so that can reduce erosion that way. Um, when there's trees, uh, it actually helps to um, increase like infiltration. Uh, so more water will go into the soil. Uh, so lack of trees, uh, it will more run off and this soil actually can compact and then it runs off even worse. Uh, we can overgraze an area. Uh, so similar thing, but instead of getting rid of the trees, we got rid of the grasses, um, but leading to similar issues. Um, obviously urbanization, you know, if you put the soil under concrete, it's not really doing its job anymore. Um, but you can increase the availability of soil within urban spaces with things like parks and green spaces. Uh, I mean, you could even, you know, create uh, garden spaces on roofs and stuff and, and have a lot of like beneficial effects, right? This will help to reduce the heat island effect of urban areas. Uh, it produces more oxygen. It can help collect dust um, and other pollutants. It's actually really nice, provides a lot of great habitat for animals. That's, that's awesome. Um, so certain agricultural practices can also affect soil like irrigation uh, using too much water can lead to salinization. Uh, and then planting one crop uh, can especially deplete the soil, especially if it's one that uses a lot of nutrients, right? So if you're growing like soybeans, you probably got to re-fertilize your land every single year. Um, actually, you can kind of see some, this cool example of some cover crops here. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, uh, like uh, you basically take the debris, right? And you spray the debris along the rows here. So you get a little bit of less wind erosion. Uh, so industrialized food production systems reduce soil fertility much more than small scale methods do. Um, and because these have such intensive inputs, they also sort of deplete the soil a lot faster. And then we can add more inputs to try to rehabilitate the soil. But like those inputs are also coming from somewhere, right? These are all open systems. We're not just getting stuff for free. First law of thermodynamics. Um, industrialized food resistance, uh, yeah, uh, so here we got a, a small scale example. Um, in this case, we have a lot of different species, right? So some of these might actually add nutrients versus using nutrients. Um, having a mixture of, of different plants can be super helpful too, right? These trees actually might provide some shade, uh, which could help uh, these um, plants here uh, retain water, lose less um, during the hot months. Um, so highland in, 
Forests intercept and slow rainfall. Their roots absorb water once it has percolated into the soil. Their roots also hold the soil in place. Leaf litter adds organic matter to soils and then nutrient levels improve because of that. Um, so forests, I mean, like most ecosystems, right, are sort of evolved to um, work with the soils that they use. Um, so forest systems are gonna have um, much more deep soils, more nutrient rich desert areas are gonna be much more nutrient poor. And you can sort of see that as a result in the productivity, right? Like, like plants are much more further apart in the desert and they're not nearly growing as big as they do elsewhere. Uh, when we replace the forest with agricultural fields, the nutrient cycle is interrupted. The roots no longer hold the soil in place. And you can see tons and tons of crazy erosion in the lower slopes here. Um, so this is called like riveting um, right here. Uh, as you get intensive rain, it'll just kind of make these gullies and then just gets deeper and deeper. Um, so yeah, runoff carrying the topsoil downhill. Mm -hmm. um, so then you kind of have a positive feedback loop, right? We can't grow plants here anymore. So we got to find a new place to grow plants. Um, so we'll cut down some trees here and then that's going to lead to more soil degradation. Uh, so we can improve the soil by conditioning it uh, we could add some organic material uh, to act as natural fertilizer. Uh, so here we have a compost versus a no compost planting. Um, we do lots of composting on campus and it's it's pretty amazing, right? Um, of course, you could get like, like a, a non-compost fertilizers too. And a lot of those might actually even be derived from fossil fuels. It's like pretty wild to think about, but yeah, some fertilizers come from fossil fuels. Um, and then wind reduction techniques, we could have um, basically like tree barriers to reduce the amount of wind. Um, as we saw earlier, like placing the uh, debris, the detritus on the soil in between the crops. Uh, we could do terraces. We could plant along the slopes like this way instead of going up and down the slopes. Um, this mostly helps to reduce um, erosion, not necessarily make the soil more fertile um mm -hmm. cool so some things you should be able to do explain the relationship between the soil ecosystem succession and its fertility um so how do the layers of soil change and then how does the nutrients change right as all these things are dying that those nutrients are getting decomposed and recycled uh talk about what humans do to soil this discuss term is again like sort of uh, a really holistic sense right so not only um, the negative things, but maybe also how do we increase soil fertility? Um, how can we reduce soil erosion, right? That's discuss is like all the, all the things. Um, it's amazing gullying right here. Really, really epic. Um, and then you should be able to evaluate soil management strategies of commercial farming systems. Um, so how does the really industrialized systems compare to more subsistence-based systems. Again, like, I don't know, sometimes they choose these images and you're like, are these like, are these even the same environment, right? Like maybe this is a, you can kind of see the background here. There probably should be a lot more productivity in this land than is actually happening right now. But maybe he's just in between plantings. Uh, once again, shout out to Mr. Kramer for his excellent slideshows.